Women Taking the Lead, Episode 226. Appreciate where you're at right now rather than always looking forward. Hello, my name is Jody Flynn and welcome to Women Taking the Lead, where we are all about creating blasts of inspiration to help you overcome self-doubt so you can lead with confidence, integrity, and a sense of humor. Head over to womentakingthelead.com to join the community and get the resources to support you on your leadership journey. Now, your future awaits, so let's get started. The world was not built for the self-employed. Many institutions that currently support the workforce are simply not keeping up with the pace of change needed to serve them. FreshBooks is among the innovators who have stepped up to provide a new solution for freelancers and small business owners in this rapidly changing market. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. I'm here with Jen Aubert, who is an author and entrepreneur. Her first book, Women Entrepreneur Revolution, Ready, Set, Launch, explores the mindset, motivation, and behaviors of successful female entrepreneurs and the role models in their lives who have influenced them. She is also the co-founder of Learn Savvy, an online community for women business owners with a primary focus on facilitated peer group masterminds called Savvy Circles. Jen currently lives in Portland, Oregon with her husband and adorable son. Jen, it's such a pleasure to be interviewing you for Women Taking the Lead. I'm very excited. But as you know, our bios are really just like a tip of the iceberg that is our (laughs) lives. So if you could tell us a little bit more about you and your own humble beginnings. Sure. I love this question, the humble beginnings, right? Mm -hmm. So I look at my life as blocked off in like decades. And I felt like after college, I went to college, a degree in psychology, going, okay, what next? But I wasn't ready for graduate school. And I thought, well, you know, it's time for me to go out and make a buck and see what it's like in the real world. And so I spent the good part of my third, or actually all of my 20s, I should say, in various corporate jobs. So I was, you know, a marketing, in in marketing, I did internal auditing, which is hilarious because I'd never taken an accounting class before. So don't tell me how I landed that job. And then also I became an executive recruiter. So, you know, I was making good money and the idea of school going back to school seemed further and further away. But there was always this yearning for something more and especially for starting a business. But with all these kind of random experiences, I didn't quite know where to turn. Um, So I just kept sticking it out in in, um, executive recruiting. And it was just painful. One day I was standing on the subway platform. I had moved from San Francisco at that time to New York. And I had everything that I thought I should have. You know, I had, I was wearing the suit. I had my little briefcase like contraption. You know, I had the New York Times underneath my arm and I was on my way to my, you know, to Wall Street. And I was deeply, deeply unhappy and stressed out and knew that this wasn't the direction I wanted to go in. So, um, long story short, my corporate years of, of really being out there and seeing what I didn't want. Um, and then I made a huge leap and became went back to school for traditional Chinese medicine, which is including acupuncture. And my 30s were focused on doing um, studying acupuncture and then becoming a practitioner and starting my own practice. And that was the years of really a lot of self-discovery and figuring out kind of the person I wanted to be and the people I wanted to serve um, and meeting some incredible people in the process. And then I took a turn in my late 30s and now into my 40s and realized that the business piece is really my passion in helping people, but it was really the who to work with. And that was women business owners and entrepreneurs like yourself, you know. So having this passion, this passion and wanting to serve women business owners, what I had a hard time with was trying to figure out how could I bridge my acupuncture skills to a community of a larger community of women business owners. So that's when I made the the choice to write a book, which was also a passion of mine, but to do so as a, an exploratory process of trying to um, understand the, you know, the mindset and the motivation and the success stories of, of other women who have been there and done that. And at various points in their in their journey. So that was really the point where I thought, okay, I'm going to 
write this book as as a way to understand and then I'll see what happens next. And then what happened next was learn savvy and, and where I'm at today. So it's been, I, I will say this, it's never a straight path. It is a journey for sure. And a winding no. one and a winding one at that. <laughs> <laughs> that was gonna be my comment after you had <laughs> described all of the turns your business had taken. And when you started going into Chinese medicine and acupuncture, I was like, Whoa, I did uh-huh. not know that about you. <laughs> that is amazing. But like, but I'm gonna ask you a follow up question because I have this um you know, uh, I guess you'd call it a a philosophy or a theory about life that, you know, there's no wasted time, like whatever, you know, wherever we end up, it always contributes to the next thing that we're going to do. Do you find that to be the case with your Chinese medicine that you are pulling aspects of that into your business today? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think it's really interesting. And and of course, you know, hindsight's always 2020. The acupuncture and going back to school for that was really the like the jumping point for where I'm at right now. It gave me the confidence to step into the role of practitioner, which then kind of in terms of one to one care for people. I ended up doing a lot of public speaking, which was really outside my comfort zone. Um, I ended up, you know, starting a business from the ground up. And I mean, from the ground up, trying to, you know, convince people or bring people into a medicine that is very unusual to a lot of people. So I felt like, yeah, and I, I absolutely agree. There are no wasted experiences or time doing other things because I it gave me such a solid foundation for where I'm at today. And had I not done that, I wouldn't have realized that my passion was women business owners, primarily because I was out networking so much um, that I was meeting all these other women business owners and was just in love with the process and the networking and hearing about what was going right and what wasn't working. And that's when I realized, ah, these are these are my people. Mm, I love that. And clearly, you know, even with all the windy turns and the new starts and I get that experience of starting (laughs) from the ground Mm -hmm. up, you know, but you and I both know after being years into our businesses, you do get more self-assurance and confidence. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you try, you know, we all have successes and failures, but overall you start to get a sense that, all right, I have more successes than failures Mm -hmm. now and everything's an experience. Experience, but if you could, Jen, take us back to um, what I call a playing small moment, and it comes from the Marianne Williamson quote, where she says, "You know, your playing small does not serve the world." And she talks about how you you have to let your own light shine. But we do experience these playing small moments where we d- we hold ourselves back, you know, because we don't realize how valuable and how capable and we are and and what we're really made of. So share one of your playing small moments and the lessons you've learned from it. I loved this question because first off, there's so many examples and I'm sure everyone has them, Um, but it's great to reflect on those, you know, and what you learn from them. Um, And the funny thing is mine is actually very recent. So with Learn Savvy, we were originally at, um, an online education marketplace. So I was recruiting business women to teach courses for us on our platform. And um, so, you know, I was out talking to women and, and they had classes that were coming to me and I would read them and I'm like, okay, this is really good. You know, the classes that they were delivering. And then when we decided to move away from the marketplace model and we were changing things around, um, it was I I started to think like, well, I could actually, why am I relying on other people to teach these classes? And, and thankfully, a woman in my mastermind group is like, Jen, you could be teaching these classes. You know, you don't need to be going out and finding people, you actually know all this stuff. And I'm like, no, 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 I, you know, I'm not a business coach. I, you know, I, I, I'm a community builder. That's what I do. And she's like, how many businesses have you started, Jen? You know, we talk about this all the time. And I thought, you're right. And and it was that mirror of having someone else say, no, 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 that is your superpower. That is your strength. You don't realize how much you know and stop selling it short. Go and start teaching, you know, the classes that are the fundamentals and the foundational um classes that you really love to talk about. Um, and so that was and that was not that long ago, um, probably within the last six months, um, at being really caught off guard that I was playing small. And you're like, Oh, 
oh no, I did it to myself, you know? So uh, yeah, so the lesson, you know, I think the lesson from that is really, we often underestimate the things that come easy to us and the things that we are really enjoy. Um, and we, we don't give it enough value. And I think that goes for a lot of people when it comes to, you know, if they're wanting to teach something or they're wanting to sell a service, you know, you have to, you often get stuck in that mindset of, well, I have to be an expert, you know, that perfectionist thing, I have to be an expert, I have to have my name with multiple, you know, uh, initials after it to justify my existence, you know, and you realize that if you are just a few steps ahead of the person that you're teaching, you have so much to share. So that was my lesson. I love it. And I, and I'm noticing a trend. I had Lisa Woodruff from Organize 365 on a couple of episodes ago, and she shared a similar experience where somebody, you know, pointed out to her, you are this, you know, (laughs) you are already doing this. This is who you are. And she was in the same thing, like, oh yeah, oh yeah. And I think, I think that's the a thing. I don't know if it's a woman thing or just a human experience thing. We don't, we don't connect the dots yeah. on our, our strengths, our skills, the value we bring. We're always afraid to take on the title. Mm-hmm. You know, we're, we're more than happy to play the role, but the title scares us or, or it just doesn't click. And it takes somebody else, someone outside of us to say that, well, this is what's going on already. It's not like you have, you know, at that point, <laughs> you didn't need to be a facilitator or become a business coach. You were doing it right like it was happening. And so for me, I feel like sometimes the lesson when I hear these stories is, I need to be that person more for other people, like pointing out to them. Do you realize you're already really good at this? Like, why don't you call yourself X, Y, or Z? Mm -hmm. Because that's, that is the work you're doing in the world. So true. But, and we need those people around us as mirrors for sure. I mean, the key is we can't do this in isolation for that exact purpose. I mean, that exact reason, you know, if we don't have other people reflecting back to us, you know, that we are doing our genius work, you know, because otherwise we just keep moving on trying to, you know, chase after the next, the next and the next. So Mm -hmm. yes. And that's, again, why it's so important to get out there to be networking to join groups so you can get that feedback Mm -hmm. so you can get other people's perspective on your business. Like, yes, I, I, I 100% agree. Like, we are our brands, right? And, And we're the creators and we have say, But we're not seeing like we don't have a 360 degree view of ourselves and our business. Other people can give us that feedback, too. And it's so important to get yourself out there because otherwise people can't give you their feedback. Exactly. Yes. All right, Jen. Now I want you to share a story about a wake up call you had in your life or in your business, whether it was a light bulb moment and came in an instant or if it was a slow awakening. (laughs) But in either case, there's there's a series of events that lead up to the wake up call and then the steps you take that lead to a success. So if you could share with us that sequence of events. Absolutely. So it's, it is definitely kind of a slow sequence, but for many, many years, I had this, I wouldn't say it was a phobia, but a very severe, um, severe anxiety around talking on the phone. And even though I was an executive recruiter, I was able to oddly enough, work around my, my fears to, to do my work. I, it probably took me, you know, twice the amount of time than everyone else to do things, but I just, I had such fear and it really held me back. Well, the moment that I decided that I was going to write a book, now this is years, fast forward years later, I'm going to write a book and I'm going to interview a hundred women over the course of a year to understand, you know, their motivation, their mindset and how they've created success for themselves. There was a moment where I had, and it still gives me chills to this day. I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to actually talk to these people on the phone. (laughs) And I, I just had, it was like all those fears, all those years. I mean, I was seeing a hypnotherapist, I was doing all this stuff to try and get over it. And in that minute or in that moment, I realized if I really truly wanted to do what I wanted to do, which was to write this book and to figure out the next steps for my journey, I had to get over it. 
you know, and there was no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And, you know, no amount of hypnotherapy or, you know, EFT work or whatever I was doing at the time to work through it. What really changed in that moment was that I had to do this. There was something in my heart that said, I have to do this and it's time and you got to move on from this fear. And so it was like literally just dropping a kid into a do- the deep end of a pool and say, swim and you'll figure it out. Mm-hmm. And I put out my emails to women who I had no previous, you know, uh, communication or relationships with and just ask them for their time to share their story and to do so on the phone. Um, and a hundred calls later, a hundred plus calls later, I was definitely cured of that, <laughs> of that fear. But I really, I realized that, you know, those fears that there's a moment where if you realize the motivation to do something that's uncomfortable, you'll do it regardless of the fear. Um, so that was the big aha moment um, for me. And I mean, l- that moment led to me being able to, to do a podcast show and to do interviews with, you know, wonderful people like yourself. I mean, I would never have done that, you know, f- let's say seven years ago. There's no way. So, right, right. It, it, you know, and that underscore is something I say to people all the time is that when you have a mission, you don't need confidence, yeah. right? That it, it just isn't even a factor. You had something that was so much bigger than yourself that yeah. you knew was going to help so many people that it had to get done. You stop and, and, and correct me if I'm wrong. You stop worrying about whether or not you have the confidence to do it. You're just like, I'm afraid and I'm doing this. And well, that's it. That's all you think about. That's it. I mean, the thing is, it's it says, yeah, I recognize the fear. But guess yeah. what? I'm going to keep going. So you can just move aside right now because I don't have time for you. I have a year. <laughs> I have a year to get right. this done. And that's right. that. Yeah. Right. There's no conversation about like, what can I do to be more confident? You stop having that conversation yeah. when you realize. And, and this this is really the lesson I, I want people to get is you don't need confidence no. to get things done. <laughs> like oftentimes you do it without confidence. Confidence comes later. Yeah. Yep. Right. Yep. Confidence is what you have now that you did had that experience and you didn't die. Now you have confidence. Right? <laughs> Even if you feel like you might, you didn't say so move. Yeah. Right. It's so true. I think people really do wait for confidence. And it's like, no, 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 no. It's like clarity is the same way you hear people like I'm going to wait to start this until I'm clear. It's like, no, 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 you don't get clear until you start doing it. Same thing with confidence. You won't get confident until you start doing things so that you can, you know, beef up your confidence. Yes, absolutely. And Jen, this will probably um, add to the the next question I'm going to ask you because, you know, th- leadership style it is such it's such a fun and important question that I ask because leadership style is a blending of your personality, your strengths, your past experiences, what you've <laughs> been through, those moments that did not kill you and you you went on to survive. And because of that, because it's a blending of all of those things, everybody has a slightly different leadership style. And that's a good thing. We Mm -hmm. all, you know, we need a variety of styles um, to get things done. So Jen, how would you describe your leadership style? That was such a hard question. Um, But I think I came up with some good things. So one of the um, (laughs) one of the ones that I thought of um, was calm enthusiasm. And I say that because there's so much enthusiastic, kind of that masculine enthusiasm where it's, you know, they're on a stage and they're just over the top. And it kind of makes you a little bit anxious, at least for me, because it's like they're kind of like on drugs or something up there on the stage. But for me, I'm enthusiastic and it's enthusiasm for other people. But it's in a sense, it's it's more of a calm enthusiasm. Like I'm just super excited for people, but not in a frenetic way. And I think, you know, there's that enthusiasm that is contagious as a result, because you're really showing that, you know, you're excited for the work that they're doing, and then they get excited for the work they're doing. So I think that's one of them. And then the other thing too, and and this is again, that's happened over the last, I'd say the last four or five years is this, this genuine building like genuine um, relationships. And that has been a really important factor for me, because 
the, you know, it's very easy in this world of the, you know, the whole on- online world to build very um, superficial relationships. Um, it's, it can be, it's very easy, I think, um, to do that. And, you know, to, and to, to build those relationships for the wrong reasons, either to do joint ventures or, or to, you know, milk their list, or I don't know, just there's so many slimy things that <laughs> that could be out there. But for me, I've, I've been very, um, I've taken the approach of doing things organically, having, you know, people um, and make introductions that they feel like it's a good introduction, like how you and I met, you know, and just building my network very thoughtfully and organically and with real genuine authenticity. I know that word is often overused, but I really do believe that. And in in our community, I've had to that when especially with the marketplace, you know, we've been introduced to people and I was and I said to my business partner, I'm like, I really don't think she's a good fit in our community, you know, and and I and I want to be that kind of leader where, you know, it's not just bringing people in for the sake of beefing us up, but it's bringing them in because there is a collaboration at play. Mm -hmm. And Jen, what is one thing that you're working on that you're really excited about and want to share with us? Well, the circles, I mean, the circles are the big, the savvy circles are the, like, what totally, utterly excites me right now. And that is our peer facilitated mastermind group. So there's four to six women in a group. We're together weekly for 90 days. And it's just incredibly inspiring for me to, to watch um, the journey of these women. Yeah, I I agree with you. That is an amazing experience when you get to bear witness and Mm. be be a guide and a mentor and sometimes just a listener Yeah, uh, for women on that journey. It's incredible. I wanted to take a minute here to talk about some of the features that FreshBooks has to help keep you organized and streamline the business side of being a freelancer or small business owner. If you have any questions whatsoever, FreshBooks award-winning customer service is amazingly helpful, super friendly, and with zero attitude. Plus, a real live person usually answers in three rings or less. FreshBooks helps you avoid having that awkward talk with your client about past due payments. FreshBooks automates late payment email reminders so you can spend less time chasing payments and more time working your magic. It starts with invoicing, but actually FreshBooks has many features to help keep you organized and streamline the business side of business. FreshBooks is offering a 30-day unrestricted free trial to my listeners. To claim it, just go to freshbooks.com forward slash lead and enter women taking the lead in the how did you hear about us section. Now back to the interview. And on the flip side of things, Jen, what would you say is your biggest leadership or business challenge that you're faced with right now? Yeah, I would say that probably goes along with a lot of people is marketing and just standing out in in a crowd. I think, you know, there's a lot that there's just a lot of noise. And so being able to get in front of the right people, I think that's always a challenge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one thing I was talking about, I'm totally going to add this in, (laughs) in, but I think this will resonate with you and with some other people too, is um, my accountability partner, she is a part of a company that um, helps to do the sales Mm -hmm. for some of these large, really large um, marketing campaigns that some of the bigger names in different industries are doing. And one thing she's been reflecting on and talking about in, in our calls is that, you know, people People are kind of getting um, tired of the the old formulas. The tri- and when I say old, I mean I really mean just like a few years old, but like four to five years old, you know. But like that that when it's a formula, like people have a feel. You can tell who has been trained by whom because they're following the same marketing formula and system and all of that. And I think people are just kind of like getting a little fatigued with it all. And we were both commenting that it's nice when you see somebody's marketing and it's different and it's fresh and it's authentic and they're saying different things. And, you know, sometimes that that's what it takes to stand out of the crowd is to, you know, the formulas are great for when you don't know what you're doing, you know, and following a system. But when, you know, it's kind of like, you know, knowing the rules 
enough so that you know when to bend or break them. I was just going to say that. Yep. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's yeah. been another trend lately too, is that, you know, with your marketing, like, you know, when to bend or break so that your authentic voice comes forward mm-hmm. and it's not just a formula you're following too. So I absolutely get that challenge, you know, cause then it's the whole, well, what is my voice? What is, you know, mm-hmm. what do I, what do I want to say? What part, what piece of me do I need to share right now? But it's a good challenge to have. Exactly. And Jen, now I'm going to go into a quick leadership roundup. So tell mm-hmm. us what is one practice you have that helps to make you a better leader? Meditation. Bam. <laughs> <laughs> what advice would you give your younger self? appreciate where you're at right now rather than always looking forward. Oh, that's great advice at any age. (laughs) (laughs) And Jen, share with us a success quote or a mantra and why it has meaning for you. So the quote is, whatever you can do or dream you can, begin it. Boldness has genius, power, and magic in it. And that's been sometimes um, attributed to Goethe, Mm -hmm. but that's up for debate. I love that one. And lastly, (laughs) Jen, what is the best way for this community to connect with you? Sure. So um, you can find um, find us at LearnSavvy.co. Um, and then our Twitter handle is LearnSavvy and Facebook is LearnSavvy as well. So that's the best way to find us. Love it. Consistent branding across the board. <laughs> <laughs> and for those of you listening, I know you're oftentimes in the car or running on the trails. You know you can find all the links and resources shared in this episode at WomenTakingTheLead.com. And Jen, thank you so much for taking the time to inspire and enlighten us. We are all better for having met you. Thank you, Jody. Something I have come to truly appreciate about this community is your disinterest in the status quo. The more I get to exchange messages and talk to each of you personally, the more I appreciate that this community is full of women who want to hit new levels in their careers and their businesses. Not only that, you want to have an impact and make changes that have a ripple effect. I also know you're often on the lookout for new programs that can help you accomplish these goals, and I've got a hot one for you. Seth Godin's Alt MBA Workshop is an intensive leadership and management workshop designed for women like you. This is an intensive and supportive program that will have you working with other ambitious change makers from all over the world. With a 96% completion rate, you can trust that you are going to get your money's worth. They're now accepting applications for the summer and fall sessions. And to find out more, visit altmba.com. That's A-L-T-M-B-A dot com forward slash women taking the lead. For special consideration, you can mention this podcast in their application and tell them Jody Flynn sent you. Thank you all for joining me on Women Taking the Lead. And to strengthen you on your own leadership journey, I'd like to send you off with a quote from Marianne Williamson, so here goes. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Again, thank you for joining me, and here's to your success.